Pirate 101 is terrible, and I love it. Now, where have I heard that before? It's not terrible, actually. It's the best. I love it because when it comes to a pirate MMO, I haven't seen any game capture the sense of adventure better. It is the perfect pirate experience. At first glance, it does look like total dog shit, but trust me, it's literally the best game ever. The aesthetics of this game speak to me in every facet. The geometry is chunky and simplistic, everything is colourful and beautiful, everyone is a cartoon character, often an anthropomorphic animal, and there are many, many different stylistic influences and cultures that go into all these characters' designs and this world design. They also have full voice acting of pretty damn good quality. Is Lamar Chol now a how of our people? No! It is I, Itza Malak, who was chosen by the Lord to lead our people through the portal to safety. You man a crew of pirates that naturally grows as you complete quests and advance your story. You sail a ship across the sky instead of the ocean because that's way cool. But most interesting of all is on top of all that, the meat of the gameplay, the combat, is wildly different from any MMO I've ever played. Instead of fighting in real time, every combat encounter is represented in a grid-based Fire Emblem-esque strategy game, where you control yourself and your crewmates. This one aspect of taking control of your crew is possibly the best way for a pirate game to be. And that sounds strange, but hear me out. One Piece is a manga about pirates, and they go around doing piratey things and shit, and it's fucking great. Pirates of the Caribbean is a series of films about pirates going around doing piratey things, and it's also great. One of the things that makes these two different is the way they handle the crew. In Pirates of the Caribbean, the story is mostly about Captain Jack Sparrow and his close friends and rivals, and the crew is sort of in the background, doing the laborious tasks, manning the rigging, you know, being comic relief, doing stuff like that in the background. They're not really important. In One Piece, it's different in that every member of every major crew has at least a name and a unique character design. The Straw Hat Pirates are the main crew of the story, and they only have around 10 members, but each member is fully realized as a character. These two pirate stories are both fantastic, but have different appeals, and I feel as though every pirate game I've ever played was leaning more towards the style of Pirates of the Caribbean by being about the player character, the Captain Jack Sparrow, who amasses a crew of nameless subordinates and does badass things all over the place, and you get treasure and stuff and upgrade your ship, and it's mostly about you and your ship, with ultimate freedom in an open world setting. Games like Puzzle Pirates are more interesting because you need players to act as the nameless subordinates to do all the heavy lifting, and you pay them with gold to do their job, and there's an interesting social dynamic there. But Pirate 101, I feel, is the true embodiment of the One Piece style of pirate appeal, where it's an adventure with you and your crew of friends that you meet along your journey. The combat lets you take control of your crew in a turn-based strategy grid, meaning that each crew member has its time to shine, and attention given to it. If it was in real time, you'd be controlling your guy and fighting, and your crew would be doing their own thing in the background. You wouldn't really see what they were up to, and you'd feel less like they were part of your team, and more that they were just your henchmen, your subordinates. Pirate 101's combat system gives your crew a sense of teamwork and togetherness, which is why it's similar to the way One Piece feels, like every crew is a family, and it's a feeling I don't think you can have without a turn-based system like this. I don't know why they chose for the combat to be turn-based. Maybe because it's easier to program, or maybe it's less taxing on the game engine, but intentionally or not, it makes Pirate 101 the most One Piece feeling game ever, more than any actual licensed One Piece game. Another reason for that is that Pirate 101 is basically a single-player campaign, with optional things to do here and there, and access to the internet so you can see other players. You couldn't really do that in a One Piece setting, because there are established stories and characters that players would want to experience. Everyone would want to be the Straw Hat Pirates on their specific journey. So a One Piece game in the style of Pirate 101 probably would never be able to happen, without introducing before the, the, the events of One Piece. Maybe it could be like, oh, this is the this is Gold Roger just found One Piece and everyone's going crazy. Anyway. What I mean by the single player campaign is that the world isn't as open as you'd think, especially near the beginning of the game. You're sort of led through a linear experience. You can go off the side and fight players and NPCs for fun, but it's always the most fun to go where the quest line leads, which is definitely refreshing. You may think something linear would be bad, but I'm sure a lot of you know how fucking boring open worlds can be. It makes so much sense for a pirate game to be all about freedom. So much freedom. 
literally no structure. Go out and do nothing because open worlds suck. Yeah, I said it. You need a solid structure in an open world, otherwise it's like walking out of your house into the real open world and walking around aimlessly until you get tired and hungry and want to go home. Pirate 101's structure is very solid and despite being rather linear, doesn't ever feel restrictive or claustrophobic. The place you're supposed to go to is also the place you feel like going. I never got the sense that I was wasting my time in an area and should leave to explore somewhere else. I would just go with the flow and the way that the game is telling me to go and it worked out great for everybody. A large bonus to having such a structured questline is the quality of the quests. The actual things you end up doing are pretty mundane. You fight a few guys to get a key or a thing or talk to a person and then he tells you where to go. But the larger quest is what really holds it all together. Once you get your ship, you're given a goal to find the lost treasure of... I forgot his name, I'll just put it on text. You're sent to a meeting of pirates discussing the journey to find this specific treasure and one of them steals the map and he runs away. And now you have a goal. You have to get that fucking dirty rat and you have to steal the map back. After a fight with his minions, the person whose map it was joins your crew so that you can run after them together and then you go outside and you learn of where he probably went and then you set sail in your dinky boat and chase him down and you find Ratbeard's betrayed crewmates whose ghosts have major regrets and need to be put to rest, one of the ghosts is willing to tell you where Ratbeard likely ran off to if you send his friends into the afterlife by sorting out their personal problems, which is a really nice thing to do. That's a, that's a good friend right there. And other stuff happens, but you see where this is going, right? You have the big goal and the medium goal, which leads to the big goal, and the smaller goal that leads to the medium goal, and it's all pointed towards the vast wealth of that guy's treasure. And I can't overstate how much pathos these random quests have. Some of them are just, whatever, please do this menial task, I'm just a guy, but the vast majority have actual emotional weight to them. This rat messed up with his sweetheart, and he wants you to find the ring he lost and give it to her and apologize. And the way he says it, it, it feels like an actual heartfelt plea. It would be different if he just said, Oh, I lost a ring and I need you to get it back so I can give it to someone. Like, I don't care about that guy. I care about this guy though, because he's like, it's all fucked up for him. He, he's already lost and he just wants you to do this one thing out of the goodness of your heart. And I do. I want to do it out of the goodness of my heart. I want to help him. I want to help him get the ring to the girl and, and make it a big apology. That's the type of quest I never see. And it's just this random rat who's completely unimportant and I, he's just great. And even though getting the ring is as simple as following the arrow to the place where the ring is and killing a guy maybe, the feeling I get by fulfilling his wishes is uncommonly satisfying in an MMO. And part of that probably has to do with the full voice acting of every bit of dialogue, of every character, of every quest. It's honestly very impressive how they managed to have so much voice work in this game. And it's all good too. But the most impressive thing is that your crew is not comprised of the same characters, even though you go through the same questline as every other player. Your companions change depending on how you build your avatar at the beginning, when you're filling out your backstory and stuff. So you can have a random assortment of crewmates that are just, you know, different for everyone. And often, those crewmates will comment on something you need to do for a quest, or something that was just said by an NPC. Judging by all the footprints, it looks like a crowd walked into that cave there. It doesn't look like anyone's left. Ratbeard will answer for his treachery. And since you have a random combination of crew members, which crew member it is that makes the comment is different. And it's not just like the crewman says generic comment 7 during any given beat up that guy to get the thing task. It's more like crewmate X says comment Y during quest 43 phase 2. Which blows my mind. I don't think I've ever heard a repeated phrase because everything they say is quest specific. They don't just mention, we need to find the key. They say something like, we need to search those tents over the hill to rescue Griggle Sniggins. He knows the way to Bongo Island, which is what we're doing right now. Like, that's the level. That's the level of specificity. And I would swear sometimes the crewmates respond to each other with comments that relate to who was talking and not just what they said. Like if the horseman said something and then the mouse lady replied, she'd add in something that references the fact that she was talking to a horseman. That may not actually be true, but the dialogue was so impressive that I'm convinced it happened a couple times. Just think of how difficult it would be with the amount of different companions you could have, the different combinations of character interaction, the different number of quests that they could talk about, and the different parts of the quests in the quests that they could talk about. The sheer amount of lines they would have to get all these voice actors to say is... so big. 
It just speaks to the effort this team went to to make this game, and it just warms my heart to see such dedication. The love and creativity that went into creating this world is palpable. I can taste it. I mean, the fact that you fly your ship through the sky from island to island is awesome enough. But on top of that, the islands they come up with are so fantastical, I just fall in love constantly. I am constantly falling in love with this game over and over. Early on in the game, you can go to a town built on top of a sky whale. It's a sky whale! It's so whimsical, I get whimslash! Now, before you go out and play this, I have to address some of the problems. It has paywalls. I don't know how many, but it has them. And it stops you from continuing on leveling and exploring the world. Like, you get to a certain island, and in order to leave that island, to go forward, you need to pay a little bit. And that sucks, and I really don't like that. Uh, it's not too expensive, I guess, but I, I just hate free games that paywall access to the end of the game. So, if you find yourself getting into this game, you may end up having to spend money to get to the end, and that's the biggest knock against it. But aside from that, it's the best pirate experience in the gaming world. I could go on, but this video is getting too long and I gotta stop. Uh, I just want to say though, that there's a recruitable frog lady, she wields two knives, she has a little hat and golden locks, and she's a frog. She's a little frog thief with golden locks, and, and she's a little frog. It's so fucking funny. I have to draw my crew. They're so cool and cute. The mouse girl, the frog girl, the fox girl, and the horse boy, the cutest of them all. God, I love pirates. I love this world. I love this place. This is so good. God, MM MMOs are like the best thing. They're like, they're like real places. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it all. And I uh, hope you do too.